right so here's clocks by coldplay uh, as you guys requested for another coldplay tutorial this is quite a nice one to begin with and it's piano driven it's something you have to play if you're a pianist i guess so the chords are very simple however the style of playing the chords is is what uh, is quite you know what will attract you to the song so if you look at all the chords which we play if you take the first chord e flat major so what's nice about the accent pattern is it's 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 1 so it's a very irregular accent pattern it's so irregular that it becomes its own riff or it becomes its it becomes a very rememberable catchy kind of phrase Uh, which is driven by the instrument otherwise it would have been this sounds like anything else right so the pattern is quite interesting 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 1 so on the piano you can take the top note of the chord middle note bottom again and so it's 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 and in the left hand what he does is he just copies the right hand so you just have to go that's the first chord that's e flat major and then that's b flat minor the second chord and then again you repeat that for the third chord and the fourth chord is f minor in normal position so it's this is the first chord so i'll i'll try to play the chords and sing na 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 with the arpeggio na 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 also not quite a nice piano exercise uh so this goes on for almost the whole song um however if you're not familiar with arpeggios you could perhaps just play the chords e flat major b flat minor b flat minor f minor perhaps you could start with that <clears throat> and even if you're not a singer i would encourage you to sing along that really gives you perspective and allows you to 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 make sure your part goes well with the with the song because eventually you'll have to play it with a singer which is either yourself or or your bandmate this is the part so it's two hands looping copy pasting the same thing and at the very somewhere in the end of the song a guitar starts playing then it that actually works on the same chords up that so i repeat think of this as a different arpeggio pattern so the guitarist starts playing that and at the very end of the song even the pianist starts playing that okay so that phrase is mind you this goes over the same chords that's e flat okay so you could actually play the chords in the left hand like i'm doing here it's pretty much 80% of the time but as the song gets heavier as the drummer starts grooving more you play the higher version instead of you go and then okay 
and the last part of the song which i wanted to talk about is the bridge where there are completely different chords which sound really awesome together so the first chord so that that's this section chords are f sharp major 7th so that's like an f sharp triad with a major 7th interval so that's f sharp major with f so and nothing else compares and i would suggest playing this also in that same 3 3 2 pattern 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 it's only The only difference is you're playing it chordally. That means one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Earlier you did as an up. Now it's together, right? Nothing else compared D flat, and then A flat suspended four. It's a very interesting chord. So instead of playing A flat major, you remove the third and you play the perfect fourth. or d flat or you can just see what i'm doing and copy it okay so we repeat first chord f sharp and nothing else compared d flat and try to follow these inversions it will make it quite easy for you i feel on the piano and that's repeated 3 times your original riff right so the do, don't miss out on the bridge we tend to forget some of the smaller sections of songs or the sections which are not so catchy but if you perform this live the audience will get a break from that same na 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 monotonous kind of riff so these bridge parts or the not so interesting or not so important parts rather are other parts which you will have to probably learn a little bit harder and put in a little bit more time because those are the parts where the artists themselves want to make the song a bit more interesting so inevitably they are going to add some more fancy chords uh, different rhythms and so on so in a nutshell clocks by coldplay basically is a 332 kind of arpeggio or a 332 phrasing throughout i'd encourage you guys to watch my video on the 332 pop exercise uh i will link it in the description do check that out and that shows you not just clocks but a lot of other songs which use pretty much the same progression 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 1 2 3 1, two. one, two, three, one. you take a song like shape of you for example so that's again 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 1 2 3 1 2 so the accents or the phrasing is basically in that really really interesting as they say like a salsa kind of rhythm a very latin kind of rhythm which has been sort of used in almost every genre you you're looking at alternative rock by coldplay all the way to to pop to jazz to pretty much every genre you'll find So all the best playing clocks by Coldplay and it's a really fun song if you're new to the piano or if you've been playing piano for a while this is just some song you'll really have to play it's like a staple diet kind of song and all singers love this so you need to play it otherwise they'll get angry with you okay cheers Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications. Leave us a comment for any other video you'd like us to do next and don't forget to share the video with all your musician friends. Cheers.